All right, another project for the day. Here I am in my basement workshop. I've got this little pancake air compressor that up to this point I really just used for as a blow-off tool just to blow dust off of things. Uh, and I do have a Craftsman driver here that's um, an impact hammer that I've actually never used. I bought it on sale and um, it's uh, potentially useful but uh, it just sits there collecting dust and um, I've recently acquired also on sale a pair of aero um, drivers, nail drivers essentially, but they're not the full-size ones. One is the PT-18G, which is a brad nailer, and the other is a PT-23G, which is a uh, pin nailer. I thought these would come in useful for some of my woodworking projects, so I scarfed them up, uh, but I'm not going to use them in just one area of the shop, so I wanted a longer length of hose up to this point, I've just had a fairly short, I don't know what it is, maybe 20, 30 feet of good, high quality, I don't know if it's Goodyear or whatever it is, it's a nice, flexible rubber hose, it doesn't kink, it's not stiff in any way, it's just a, a nice hose, and um, I just keep it looped up on the floor, and I usually just lift the last few feet to blow things off, I sort of drag them over here. And I decided I was going to put in a hose reel under this workbench, the one my drill press and belt sander are on, right next to the compressor. I've actually got a, a short length of leader hose coming in. It's a, I think it's a Goodyear one. Uh, bought it on Amazon. I'm going to loop that from here to the hose reel because the leader on the hose reel is not long enough to reach the compressor. Uh, so that adds a few feet. And uh, then I'm going to pull out the hose on the hose reel to get to wherever I need to to uh, work. And then this hose here and the rather stiff, cheap hose that I have as a standby will go on the left side of this workbench here. Um, and I picked up at the hardware store under all this crap here. A uh, garden hose reel uh, holder that'll go on there and allow me to store those loops of hose for when I need to uh, put them in series and get outside the back door into the backyard for blowing dust out of the filters of my shop vacs and things like that. So the, the real task here is to come up with a bracket to mount the hose reel. First I thought I was just going to put some tap cons into the foundation and mount it, but it's too far back. I want to have it so that the front of it is almost flush with the front of the bench. So for that I need to mount it to something else. And first I thought, well, I'll just come up with a pedestal that sits on the floor and has a post going up that this bolts onto, and I thought that would be kludgy and probably would slide around when I'm pulling the hose out. So I decided instead I'm going to put some scrap plywood up on the bottom of the joists uh, on the bottom of this workbench and then suspend down from that a, a post, just build up out of plywood I think, um, and then bolt the um, mounting bracket of the hose reel to that. So then the area under it will be free and I have this very dusty motor and controller which I bought to someday replace the stock motor on my um, mill drill so that I could more readily get variable speed and I also have a digital readout for this stored somewhere that uh, with a tachometer but that's for another rainy day that hasn't actually come in several years Anyway, this looks like a quick project, and I should be able to knock this out pretty quickly. Well, the hose reel needs 18 inches to go from the um, the hang of this here, from this point to this point, is 18 inches. 
So if I put a, this is the structure of the table here, and these are the so-called joists. This is going to be a piece of plywood, probably half inch plywood. And uh, then there's going to be a sort of a box built up out of half inch plywood that extends down sort of like a post. And uh, so that's going to be 18 inches from the front of that to the front of the table. And I figure from the bottom of the joist down to the bottom of the post needs to be 14 inches. And I think 4 inches is a good width. If it's any narrower than that, it'll be, I think, too unstable. Um, so really, I just need to have a piece of plywood cut out and then four more pieces to make a, a box section coming down. I could also do sort of like an I-beam type structure, but I think a box will be stronger or at least maybe a bit easier to build and have it square. So here's the piece of plywood I'm going to use to run across the bottom of the uh, table joists. And I've got a set of lag screws. I think they're number or quarter inch and washers which will anchor this to the joists of the table in six places. The dimensions on this uh, box post <clears throat> that I'm going to build out of plywood are not critical. And I know the plywood I have isn't exactly half an inch thick, so I'm not going to sweat it. Uh, I'm just going to make the whole assembly 13 and a half inches tall, which, assuming approximately half inch for the plywood piece that goes along here, gives me approximately the 14 inches I want. And um, so I'm going to make four pieces that are 13 and a half just for simplicity and quickness of cutting and uh, each one's going to be four inches so it'll be laid up like this with this being the front it'll be four inches wide and about five inches deep so deeper than wide and here are the uh, four cut pieces 13 and a half by four each to make up the the post and getting ready to glue it up here got my pin nailer ready And I set these up with the square and hold them uh, flush on there until I put in the first couple of pins. I think just for yucks, I'm going to put in a uh, square piece at each end, partially to keep all the bugs out on the bottom, the open end, <clears throat> and also just to make it a little more robust on the top end. So I need to get... about three and an eighth by four and a thirty second. So rather amazingly those fit the first time really nice without even uh, having to sand them or tweak them. And so there's the uh, box section or the uh, the post section all glued and pinned. And um, I have to go away and play in a uh, concert in the city of Chicago right now so I better scoot out of here and when I come back I will 
uh, sand this up a little bit and fasten it to the uh, top piece of plywood and then put in the mountings uh, I've got some brass inserts that will go in one of these phases and that will uh, give anchor to the uh, hose reel and here's the box after the glue is dried and I've given it a really rough sanding just to take the edges off all right, I've got a test fitting here. I've got my uh, top plywood board notched out for the leg of the table. I've got my holes drilled through. And um, I've got uh, this test placed here just to visualize it. And now I have to put my um, brass threaded inserts into here. And now I'm just test fitting the reel here. <clears throat> to get the uh, vertical alignment of the holes. Have it placed on a block of wood there for a bit of clearance. And here's the hardware I'm going to use to attach the uh, hose reel bracket to the wooden box here. I've got these brass inserts and suitable um, hex head bolts and a lock washer and a flat washer. So I just need to drill these out to accommodate these inserts. And I've got the three holes drilled and I'm ready to put the inserts in. I like to uh, epoxy these in just so that Sometimes when you're back in the screw out, sometimes the insert backs out too. I just like to do that to secure it. Well, I've got those inserts in there. The uh, wood's a little chewed up by the holes because my screwdriver that's wide enough to span those bits is itself a bit wider than the hole. So as I got it down to flush, it was starting to tear in to the wood a little bit. I'll just sand that off. And there they are, sanded more or less flat. So now I can go about mounting the box here on the board. I'm going to glue and screw, using uh, some drywall screws, the post onto the board here. Well, I don't have much faith in the strength of drywall screws, so uh, and the ones I have aren't very long, so they're not going into the the wood very far so I decided to put some extra ones on. I've got two for each side and I was just putting four in into the board that's on the end of the box but I first put one at the center just to hold it in place check for alignment before I put the rest in so it actually has that extra screw. So I've used the lag screws in six places to mount the board to the bottom of the table and uh, all indications are it's in the right place and uh, the thing I want to do here is kind of prevent all the spiders and other vermin from making homes in here that I can't vacuum out I know it's kind of out of sight and out of mind but um, I think I want to do that and uh, I want to make it removable because I've got the bolts here that hold down my drill press and uh, I want to be able to get at those in case I want to move the drill press. Of course I could always just undo the lag screws and drop the whole thing but I don't want to nail anything up here for example. Um, so to that end I've got some scrap a uh, quarter inch actually, it's some metric size, it's smaller than quarter inch uh, plywood laying around. And I'm just going to put it up here as kind of a vermin barrier. Alright, so the anti-bug boards are put up there. As mentioned before, they're not as thick as the the structural board 
and I'm not going to bother to varnish this or anything. It's uh, fine down here and it's pretty much out of sight. It's not going to get wet. So the only thing really remaining at this point is to bolt on the hose reel. But I'm going to wait for the glue to dry just a little bit more. So I have to hang the uh, the hose hanger for the extra air hose and I just have this kind that's intended for uh, garden hose and uh, as usual it's not going to mount here very nicely but it doesn't need to be very strong it's not going to hold much weight the bracket which is probably intended to go into drywall or something is much too long so I'm going to hack off a little bit where that crude line is, drill a couple of new holes, put a couple of drywall screws in there and as Dave Jones would say, Bob's your uncle. And so there's the air hose holder attached to the end of the workbench and uh, it was sloped down. I think most of these are intended to slope down like this one does but I didn't really want that so I just grabbed it and bent it up straight. The screws were strong enough to hold it against the bench while I did that. The other thing I want to do is put a couple of hooks into the uh, the bench somewhere to hang the air hoses or the air tools from. So now I'm ready to mount the bracket on the hose reel to this wooden post. There's actually three holes but only the top and bottom one are slotted and uh, I was kind of hoping that the washers I picked would go through the holes but they don't which is annoying so I'm gonna have to um, put these on here without the washers initially and then remove one at a time and put the washers on well as it turns out um, I could get the washers in there, but then to take it apart, it would be a real pain in the neck again if I ever want to unmount this, because you can't just loosen them, slide it up, and pop it out. The washers are too big. And um, so I took a look at it, and I realized I have plenty of coverage from the head by itself, and I don't really need any lock washers on here, even though my first inclination was to put them there. And uh, just a couple screws top and bottom do the trick. I'm not going to use that middle hole simply because there's just no way to get a screw in there in actuality. And by the way, this bracket doesn't come off easily. You have to dismantle the whole plastic case to get it off. And I didn't want to do that, so I'm not sure why they put that middle hole. It seemed like a good idea, but it's going to work with just the top and bottom brackets. So. Here's the hose reel. It's recessed under the table so I'm not going to be constantly banging into the hose when I'm uh, working on the drill press, for example. And when I want to uh, pull the air hose out into the yard, it'll swing over this way and clear the table so it can go out diagonally. And actually it can even go back this way, allowing me to run the air hose behind my lathe and get it out to the door the shortest way but otherwise it has a full sweep of anywhere in my basement I'm likely to work so that part's good and here's the uh, hose whip uh, six foot length of three eighths inch rubber whip hose Goodyear I'm going to use it to extend the whip hose on the uh, hub of the hose reel and that requires a quarter inch female to female coupler which I have one here and then um, at the end of the hose whip I've gonna, I'm going to have a, a male quick disconnect and at the other end of up here, I'm going to have a female uh, quick disconnect. And there's the air hose whip to air hose whip coupling. 
And there's the mail quick disconnect. And finally the quick disconnect on the end of the air hose. Well, imagine my annoyance when I discover that the quick disconnect fitting I got isn't the right one. The hardware store only had this one kind and it was put right next to the uh, female ones and uh, those aren't the right kind either. So apparently I didn't notice some fine print on there that differentiated one kind from the other. I just assumed they were the right kind and they don't fit. So I'm going to have to go back and get the right kind before I can really test this out. So I think this is probably just as good a time as any to digress slightly from the point of this video and talk about these air hose connectors, these quick disconnects. I got suckered into it by unclear labeling on the packages of the hardware store and just not looking carefully enough through the the bubble packs. But um, at least in North America there's uh, I think about three common reasonably popular uh, types of air hose disconnects at least in the common sizes of light industry and uh, home use uh, which is usually quarter inch fittings and um, the most common by far has got to be the one that's called industrial interchange or mill spec or just military uh, this was something that was originally specified by the military and was since embraced by industry and um, obviously the most popular. It's the one you see on almost everything. Um, it's sometimes just shortened to industrial instead of industrial interchange. Um, there's also a Milton system that refers to it as a Milton M. I'm guessing that's for military. Then the uh, second most popular was originally called True Flate, and as the uh, name might imply, it had something to do with inflation, and it was used primarily in the automotive industry for air inflation equipment of various sorts. And uh, these days it's just referred to as automotive. And then there's the other kind, which is probably third in popularity, and that's the ARO. I don't know what that stands for. I believe it's the initials of whoever originated it, but I'm not positive of that. Um, when I looked it up, I seem to remember hearing that it was originally developed for fluid, actual liquids, not air, but i um, not positive of that either. Um, but in certain circles it seems to be used as an alternative to the industrial um, but almost every source I looked at agrees that it's the third most popular after industrial and automotive. The Milton rating for automotive I think, don't quote me on this, I think it's T and that's probably for True Flate, the original uh, name of the type and the Milton uh, code for the ARO is just A so Milton M for military slash industrial, Milton A for ARO, and Milton T for true flight or automotive. Anyway, so I'm sitting here holding this picture. Um, the ones on the bottom are the original ones that I bought by mistake. This is the ARO system. Looks a lot like the one on the top, which is the military or industrial type. You know, they're very close to the same size and configuration. You can't even tell by looking at the female half. But take a closer look at the um, barbs on the male parts. This is the ARO and it still has these two tapered ridges facing each other just like the industrial one has. But on the industrial one they're spaced out with the bottom part being maybe an eighth of an inch between where it starts sloping and where it starts sloping on that side as opposed to the ARO where the two slope parts come together to form kind of a U or V shaped um, <clears throat> that seems to be the easiest way to tell them apart even though the overall length of the fittings are about the same 
and the diameters are the same. But this is what gets you into trouble. You know, everything will seem like it's fitting in there, but this one will not fit into here, probably because the um, little spring-loaded balls inside of there can't grasp into this channel because they're designed to be over here instead of over here. And likewise, this one isn't going to go in correctly because the balls are going to be trying to clamp onto a place where there's no detent. So, um, <clears throat> based on everything I've heard and read, <clears throat> the average homeowner, anyway, should probably be going with the industrial design and not using the automotive or the ARO. But I suppose there are special situations. Anyway, so I just thought I'd try to clear that up as best as I'm able. And so here's the final installation of the air hose reel. The uh, air compressor tucks under here. I've still got my spare motor for the mill drill stored under here. And that uh, extra piece of, uh, I think it turned out to be six foot long hose whip is a good way to give some flexibility and not bind up on the short length here and I can still move the compressor out uh, to work on it or whatever and still have a bit of hose to play with so I think that was a good length the um, the reel swivels every which way like I pointed out it'll even swivel over to feed out the side of the workbench and this is with the new um, industrial type quick disconnects on it so I've snapped the uh, blow off on here and this is I think supposed to be about 30 feet and with most of these you wait till it starts ratcheting and then release it and it won't retract but if you pull it to the point where it's not ratcheting and then release it Well, this is most of the way across my shop. So that seems to work pretty well. And I can kind of spin it over here to the side. And it's certainly not in the way. And as already touched on, I've got my two spare lengths of air hose on the um, hose holder on the side of the same workbench. And here's what I came up with to hold the tools under the workbench so hopefully they won't get covered with sawdust and stuff coming from above. But they should still be pretty easy to grab. It's just a scrap of um, approximately one inch by one inch pine board that I cut off of some other thing for another project. I rounded off the corners, put a couple drywall screws on each end, and put a couple of uh, these square hooks in there. So, now, that tool hangs there, and this tool hangs right next to it. I can kind of put them right up so they're touching each other and that prevents them from swinging a lot. That's where I place the hook so they would do that. For whatever it's worth, the uh, oiler I'm using on my air tools here is the Tool Aid um, <clears throat> product 98500 called the Oiler. It got pretty good reviews on Amazon. Uh, both of the two that I ordered had slight defects. One of them was missing the gasket for the filling screw so it would leak out of there when I pressurized the tool. 
and the other one had some sort of manufacturing error where the oil fill hole seemed to be plugged and I couldn't fill it. Uh, so I called Tool Aid and they uh, gave me some replacements and sent me a gasket. Uh, it was really just this little gasket on this screw here. Um, but this is what the product looks like. It's got the clear reservoir and that's one of the things I liked about it. it seemed to be pretty well built overall. So I've got my tool oil in this little uh, squeeze bottle or a pump bottle with a rigid tip. So I should be able to Oops. You actually have to um, unscrew the housing a little bit to provide a gap past its gasket so the air can be displaced from the oil that's coming in. So there's the uh, pretty much filled oil reservoir on there. And there's my uh, recently set up air hose plugging in. There's a slight leak, but it's over in the uh, um, the head of the unit. That's a bit of leakage through the tool. It's not leakage down here. And here's the replacement oiler that I got from Tool Aid. This one filled properly and it had the gasket, so hopefully there will be good things from that. And the tool is not leaking, nor is the oiler. So that is working in a satisfactory fashion. And so now there's the two fully functional oiler equipped air tools hanging down there out of the way. And the one thing I think I might want to do yet is these, uh, the bigger one, the brad nailer, has just a hatch that you can pop open quickly if you have a jam. Whereas the uh, pin nailer does not, you have to undo a couple of um, Allen head screws. Um, and I hate having to go running for the special tool every time that type of thing happens. And the tools do come with their own set of Allen wrenches. So I'm thinking of just coming up with something quick and dirty that can go right here by the tools to hold those wrenches. And I got some quarter inch uh, aircraft plywood here, or craft plywood. And uh, if I allow about a half an inch on each side for screw holes, and I just put some slots in here, um, I can certainly fit the four wrenches. I think these two are slightly different size, these two are the same size, but they're the two sets of tools for the two tools. Does that make sense? The two pairs of tools. There we go. And I'm uh, going to have them all here, so I just need to divide that spacing up. I don't mind if they overlap a little bit here. So I just have this piece of quarter inch here, and uh, about three inches wide. And I've just used the uh, table saw, raised up a little bit, passing the wood over it a few times. I made these rather imprecise slots in the wood. I'm going to put a couple of drywall screws in there and um, that should hold the pieces. And here it is on the board. There we go. 